Well, once again, good morning. Welcome to Friday Thoughts, Living Faithfully Together. And uh, we're glad that you're making the time to join with us. Uh, Pastor Kerry and I thought we would do kind of a dialogue thing today, especially in light of all that's happened and transpired uh, this week uh, on Capitol Hill. And uh, I think both of us on one level or another are just really struggling with the insurrection and the, the events that, that took place yesterday uh, at the Capitol. Um, and it's painful to see people acting out in destructive ways um, and in ways that are hurtful not only to um, the people's house, the capital, but um, in ways that are so painful and hurtful to one another. Right. Uh, showing the, the deep division and divide and, and brokenness that is uh, clearly present in our, in our country right, right. now. And that's been one of the things, um, really over the last couple of years at least, that has been hard to, um, how do we deal with this divisiveness yeah. that um, is so prevalent right now? And it feels like we've just lost that ability to have, be in conversation and to listen uh -huh. to one another. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think to have something happen in this country that you usually only see in other countries that we usually go to help them learn how to do yeah. democracy yeah. was really unsettling for so many people. Yeah. And so I think as, as Pastor Kerry and I were thinking about this and planning for this today, what we really wanted to say is this is not about Democrat or Republican, uh, conservative or liberal. This is, this is about the language we use to talk to one another. And uh, I woke to some rantings on the news this morning, and I, it was just not helpful. Uh, ratcheting up the rhetoric uh, doesn't help us find a way to listen to one another or care for each other. Right. And so we, we thought today um, was a chance for us to talk with you about that and, and to say as much as we watched things unfold as they did in the Capitol yesterday, the other piece of January 6th is it is epiphany. Mm -hmm. you know, and so in the life of the church, what epiphany means for us. Uh, you know, it is, uh, reflects the coming of the wise men. It reflects uh, the epiphany of God's great love and mercy for us in the person of Jesus. And uh, the image that I hold dear is the notion of a light in our darkness. Right. And, and how desperately yesterday we needed the light of Christ's love to shine brightly in the darkness of what was going on. Right, exactly. So, so as we think about that, you know, um, for me it's an awareness that there's, there is a brokenness that we have and there is a great need for healing uh, in our nation. Yes, and it's yes. not going to happen overnight. Um, part of your coming here at Trinity uh, was helping us deal with some of our own conflicts, and I think we've come a long way. Mm -hmm. um, but it's taken time, and it's taken a willingness um, to reach out, and a, a willingness to listen, and to, uh, to engage with one another in, in caring ways. And I, I, this is not about a transition of one presidency to another on the 20th of January. This is really about uh, a long-term process of healing. Yes. Um, and, and that we as Christians get a chance to be a part of that. Right. And once again, the importance of, as we move forward, the importance of not trying to get out what our perspective is or what's important to us, but actually stepping back and really opening our hearts to listen to the other. Yeah. To hear what it is that's on their minds and on their hearts. And um, I, I think when we do that, we gain understanding, um, but there's also, that's where the healing comes then, mm -hmm. and the building up comes from, is knowing that somebody isn't just out there for their own perspective, that, that they really do want to hear yeah. why something is important to you, or how it's impacted you. Yes. And so I think as part of that, we want to continue to say to you, from our perspective as pastors, we still long to listen to what's happening in your life and uh, we long for you to feel 
comfortable enough to share that with us. Uh, your needs, your hurts, mm -hmm. uh, to know that we're here to care, uh, to provide pastoral care, to pray for you, to pray with you, literally, um, uh, around the needs that are so real. And uh, I think that that's, that's vital to what's going on. We, it's not just about a transition of power in Washington, it's still that we're dealing with a pandemic that as the vaccine rolls out, and we know that people are on all sides even about whether or not to receive that, right. um, and the fear that continues to be a part of that, uh, the anxiety, um, that we need to remain diligent and loving and caring for one another, um, and uh, supporting one another to make it through what is uh, still a long ways yet to go. Yeah. And I think that's important to remember is that the vaccine is here, but it's still a long process ahead of yeah. us. Um, I think so many of us thought we couldn't wait for 2020 to be over, that 2021 would come, and then it felt like everything was going to be <laughs> over. Uh, we still have a long journey ahead of us, and that's why it's so important that we do have these conversations and that we listen and that we understand that people still have a lot of fear that they're facing right now on different levels. And there's uncertainty as part of that. Yes. You know. So we're, we're cognizant of that. Um, we're in the midst of the start of this first week of the new year, and already we're dealing with three funerals right now. And uh, one of those uh, was on Tuesday this week for Carrie Holmquist. Um, and I have to say that in the midst of uh, working with Larry and family, uh, he shared some things from Carrie that just were so powerful and profound. Um, what I discovered about about Carrie was um, in visits with her and bringing communion, uh, the deep-rooted faith that she has, and um, a devout faith that was that was that was clearly based in her trust in Jesus, but was also rooted and grounded in her relationship with the church. Mm. And, and that was really powerful. And because it was faith in Jesus, but it was also rooted and grounded in the church, it brought out her love for music and uh, her passion for the story. And, and so Larry shared with me uh, a, a couple of things, uh, uh, writings that, that Carrie had. And uh, one of them was something she wrote back when she was still either in high school or in college before she was married. Um, and it was a beautiful thing, uh, in a class on theology, I think, where she asked, uh, it was titled, Good Works, as they were related to salvation. And she asked the question, are good works a means to salvation? And her answer, in part, was a quote from Romans 6, it's impossible for us, being sinners, to earn our salvation. We can't do that. But on the other hand, she said, um, it's not by works of righteousness that, that are done that we have salvation, but it's according to the mercy uh, of Jesus uh, that we are saved. On the other hand, she says, but good works are the very purpose for which Christian has been redeemed. She just said that with such clarity. Yeah. It's, it's the very purpose for which we are redeemed. And as Christians, we are a peculiar people set apart for the purpose of edifying our Savior. And that may not always be easy. There will always be those who will make it hard for Christians uh, by their jeers and their other acts of unfaithfulness. Um, but we are called to do that. And what I wanted to share today was the, the final paragraph of this article she wrote for a class. So God has given us his great book, the Bible, in which his word has been conveyed through centuries. But the test of its power and the proving ground of scripture's truth is established in the Christian life. And this is the Christian's responsibility. For a Christian is a mind through which Christ thinks, a heart through which Christ loves, a voice through which Christ speaks, and a hand through which Christ helps. Mm -hmm. And I just think we need to hear that today. That's powerful. Isn't that so beautiful and so simple? That for Carrie, faith was not just to believe in Jesus, 
but it was a call to action, to putting her faith into action, lived out in the care of others mm -hmm. as a reflection of her love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I want to end with just this quote one more time and invite you to close us with prayer today. All right. So for a Christian, a Christian, for a Christian is a mind through which Christ thinks, a heart through which Christ loves, a voice through which Christ speaks, and a hand through which Christ helps. So thank you, Carrie, for sharing that reminder to all of us. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for all that you have allowed into our lives this past year, the good along with the hard things, which have reminded us how much we need you and rely on your presence filling us every single day. We pray for your spirit to lead us each step of this new year. We ask that you will guide our decisions and turn our hearts to deeply desire you above all else. We ask that you will open doors needing to be open and close the ones needing to be shut tight. We ask that you would help us release our grip on the things to which you've said no, not yet, or wait. We ask for help to pursue you first and seek to meet the needs of our neighbors, especially those in need. Thank you for your awesome story of coming among us in human form and teaching us how to love one another. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessings to all of you. Thanks for joining us.